Mm, next topic is manifold learning. Okay, usually a uh, manifold learning means the nonlinear dimension reduction algorithms, and it finds uh, they find uh, invariant property of a data set. And when the manifold is uh, linear, then we can apply uh, linear methods like PCA, MDA, and ICA, NMF, etc. And also we can uh, think of nonlinear methods like quantum PCA, quantum FD, isomap, LLE. Usually when people say a manifold learning algorithms, they mean uh, isomap or LLE or stochastic neighbor embedding, etc. Okay, these PCA and LDA, ICA, NMF, quantum PCA, Usually people don't call them manifold learning, but in a sense, they are kind of part of this manifold learning. Okay, so what is a manifold actually? Think about this uh, globe. Okay, so we have, we have a map from this 3D. Okay, it means this two dimensional uh, space is actually embedded in the three dimensional space like this. Okay, then uh, this manifold manifold is defined by uh, de defined as a uh, uh, differentiable uh, space where uh, locally Euclidean. Okay, that is definition of manifold. So look at this globe. If we zoom in a lot, then it's a flat. Okay, it's a flat land. So everything is Euclidean there. Okay, think about your table. So table is flat. But if we zoom out, then it is curved, right? But anyway, locally Euclidean. And then this two-dimensional space is embedded in the high-dimensional space. Okay. And here is another figure. So when this figure, uh, when this image is rotated, then uh, let's think about this image, okay? Let's say 10 by 10 image. Then this space is uh, 100 dimensional space. And when we rotate, when this image rotated, then this one is moving in this 100 dimensional space slightly and slightly and, and probably the uh the rotation of this image will make a curved manifold like this okay it will not be a straight line obviously and there is other kind of factors instead of you know uh rotations what about how about uh changing uh illumination or how about changing uh orientation Okay, then based on those factors, we can generate other from this image. Okay, then we can generate some other curve. And if we change both factors at the same time, then probably we will have uh, something like two dimensional hyper surface. Okay, and then uh, long time ago, like uh, in 2004, uh, there was a paper uh, saying uh, the manifold learning algorithms are actually color machines. Okay, that was proposed in 2004. And we had the same idea. Okay, then uh, we proposed uh, some papers about this. So I'm going to talk about it later. Anyway, a manifold learning is actually a uh, color machines. And uh, before talking about these manifold learning algorithms, uh, let me uh, uh, point out one important thing. So PSD, positive semi-definite, is necessary and sufficient to be a metric which defines a distance function. Again, if we define one color function, uh, we defined inner product matrix in the high dimensional space, and if we define the inner product matrix, then we can drive a distance between data points. Okay, if we know the inner products, then we know the distance. If we know the distance, then we know the inner products. Okay, 
So they are kind of equivalent. So in general, metric, kernel, and distance, and coherence, all are equivalent. And in a sense that they define a manifold by defining relations between points. So here is the thing. If we define the distance between the data points, then we can we can estimate what kind of manifold where they lie. Okay. So let's let's say uh this is the data manifold and data is data samples are located like this. And if we know the distance between the data samples, okay. If we know the the distances be between the data samples, then we can guess what kind of manifolds, okay. And if we know the covariance, then we so they are all equivalent. If we know the covariance, then we can drive distance and inner product and kernels and and we can guess how how these data samples are uh, located and in manifold learning so we have as i said we have a linear net manifold learning usually we don't call them a manifold learning though okay as a non-linear manifold learning algorithms uh, we have uh, two representative algorithms isomap and local linear embedding but in 2008, the stochastic neighbor embedding was proposed by Martin and Hinton. If you are uh, studying uh, deep learning, then you might have heard a lot about Jeff Hinton. Okay, So before deep learning, then Jeff Hinton was also working on manifold learning algorithms too. And Yosha Benjo uh, has published a couple of papers in the manifold learning too. Okay. And then there are lots of algorithms, Laplacian eigenmaps and the semi-definite embeddings and and the fusion maps, Hessian eigenmaps, and stochastic. Uh, I talk, I already said that, and the locality preserving projections, etc., and so on. And this deep autoencoder is actually neural network based manifold learning algorithm, or neural network based nonlinear dimension reduction algorithm. So we are going to talk about this one later. Okay. Other than that, all the other methods are uh, traditional manifold learning algorithms, which means uh, these algorithms can be interpreted as kernel machines. Okay. Which means uh, all these are solved based on eigen decompositions most of the time. Okay, uh, in manifold learning, there is a couple of uh, there are a couple of assumptions. Okay, so first of all, we uh we think uh, data samples were generated by transformation of the parameters in a latent space. So these are parameters. So if this one is uh, one point is a face image, okay, then x one is rotation. And x2 is up and down or something. So if we change these two parameters, let's say this one is rotation, then this one is a zero, then this one is positive angle and negative. And this is zero, this one is up and this one is down. So if we control these two parameters, then we can generate some face images. So from here, based on the rotations, then we can generate these samples. And based on up and down, then we can generate this sample. If we change both, then we can generate these samples too. So when we observe some data samples, then we assume that these data samples are from these two hyperparameters. Okay, and uh, based on the nonlinear function. And for a nonlinear method, uh, there are more assumptions. The sample should be dense enough. Okay, so. Uh, the data samples should be like this but if we have some data samples like this and they are not connected they're they are kind of sparse we have empty space around here between these data samples and these data samples and they are not connected 
then we cannot apply manifold learning algorithms. So basically, these samples should be dense and they should be connected. So we need lots of data samples between these two. Okay. And again, as I said, by definition, you know, the, many, the definition of manifold, manifold learning assumes that everything is locally Euclidean. Okay. If we zoom in really, really uh, closely, then this is Euclidean. Even if, uh, even though the uh, manifold is really sharp, then if you zoom in here, locally, it is Euclidean. Okay. It's flat. It is flat line. If you look at, if you zoom in a lot. Okay, the first representative algorithm is isomap. And the manifold learning algorithms are to find the embedded manifold from data samples in a high dimensional space. There's a general uh, uh, statement about manifold learning algorithms. And let's say this is true manifold in the two dimen uh, three dimensional space. And we don't have any idea about this. Okay. We observe data samples. Okay. From these uh, three-dimensional uh, data samples, we have to reconstruct a two-dimensional representation like this. And then, uh, by the way, uh, the name of this kind of data set is a Swiss roll data set. It looks like a Swiss roll, you know, the snack. Okay, so given this uh, uh, Swiss roll data samples, then we want to unfold these samples into two-dimensional space. And isomap is perfect to do this. And isomap algorithm is really simple. It's super simple. Okay, so basically uh, isomap uh, uses MDS, okay? So MDS says as long as we uh, know the distance between the data samples, then we can project the data samples into uh, coordinate okay and if we use a few uh, eigen vectors then we can project the data samples into low dimensional space okay so isomap uses mds and the question is how to define the distance between the data samples and isomap uses geodesic distances on a neighborhood graph that's it so geodesic distances and MDS, that is isomap. And then how can we get this geodesic distance? Oh, by the way, what is the geodesic distance uh, on this globe? We have uh, Korea here and the opposite, we have Argentina. Okay, from South Korea to Argentina, how to get there? We cannot go through this planet globe, right? We cannot go through this earth. We have to follow this manifold. Okay. Then what is the shortest path? That is this length. Okay. So, so this distance is the shortest path on the manifold. If we have uh, data samples like this in this figure from this point to this point what is the distance? the Euclidean distance says this but uh, if we calculate Euclidean distance between these two points then we have to go through this empty space so we have to get out of this manifold and then we have to reach and that is not possible so we cannot get out of this manifold so we have to follow this manifold to get here and then the shortest path on this manifold is actually geodesic distance so isomap will calculate geodesic distance and then as long as we have a distance then we just simply apply mds then the question is how can we get this geodesic distance first of all uh, construct a Euclidean distance matrix D sub E. Okay, 
So in this distance matrix, we calculate all the distances. So from here to here to here to here, even to here, we calculate all the distances. Okay, because in this case, we have no idea about the manifold. Okay, so just calculate the Euclidean distance and then find neighbors and connect them. So from here, if we find the neighbors, then these points are neighbors, right? Okay, then just connect them and disconnect all the other data samples. Okay, and now calculate geodesic distance, which is just uh, simply a shortest path. So we have a connected manifold, a connected graph. So all the points are connected to its neighbors. And by that, these are connected. And these uh, connections are disconnected. Okay. And this one is disconnected. And we just calculate the shortest path. Okay. And then if we follow the sh uh, this shortest path, and because we have only neighbors, so neighbors are connected. So if we calculate the shortest path, then we approximately get this geodesic distance. Approximately, it's not correct, but approximately. Okay, then we use this geodesic distance matrix and apply MDS. That's it. Okay, and then if we check this shortest path on, the, on this manifold, and in the unfolded manifold, this shortest path will be like this red curve. And this one is uh, slightly different from this straight line, the blue line. Blue line is actual uh, geodesic distance, but there's no way to get this geodesic distance. Right, so we just approximate this geodesic distance based on a shortest path. Okay, isomap algorithm is that simple. That's it. And the question is, who is my neighbor all the time? You know, in machine learning, the question is how to define the dissimilarity and who is my neighbor. So most machine learning algorithms use local neighbors to construct a graph and there are two approaches. We already talked about these two approaches before. First, we get the k nearest neighbors, which is more popular. And second, epsilon neighborhood. So in k nearest neighbors, we choose the k nearest neighbors. Okay, so if the red point is the point that we're interested in, then uh, if k is 4, then from here, we get the 4 nearest neighbors, these guys. Okay, good. And the other option is epsilon neighborhood. So define the epsilon first and then choose the neighbors within this epsilon. So this is epsilon. Within this epsilon, we have three points. And then these are the neighbors. But usually we prefer this k nearest neighbors. Because if we use epsilon, then epsilon, uh, epsilon uh, depends on the data distributions. So it's not that simple. We have to probably calculate the basic uh, the distance, uh, the distribution of the distances, and then based on this, we have to define epsilon. But if we use k nearest the neighbors, then k would be three or five or seven, depending on the number of depending on the total number of samples, okay? And the K does not make much difference as long as it is in a appropriate range. Usually, appropriate range would be like a three or five, seven. It could be 11, okay? But if the manifold is really noise, noisy, then uh, we have to minimize the data. Uh, we have to minimize uh, uh, the K. So if we apply isomap, then if k is too large, then there is the short path between these two. Okay, if we have a short path, 
then geodesic distance is not actually uh, cannot reflect the manifold look at this one this samples and this sample the shortest path should be like this but if there is a shortcut here then probably this one would be the shortest path so we cannot increase k too much And if you apply a uh, isomap to face images or handwritten digits, then we can get these beautiful uh, figures. And and if we use the two uh, dimensional, then the first dimension would be a left right pose. Again, you know when we apply the machine learning algorithms, we cannot have a meaning of the coordinate automatically uh, in this case after applying isomap then we look at the result and then we figure out oh this first dimension is about left to right pose and second dimension looks like up down pose okay these meanings are given by us so machine learning algorithm usually cannot define the meaning of these coordinates cannot automatically and also in on if when isomap is applied to handwritten digits then the first dimension looks like a top arc articulation how how curvy this uh, digit is and the second would be bottom loop articulations how much uh, curve here in this case we don't we don't have any curve and in this case we have a lot of curve okay again these meanings are provided after isomap and as i said uh we can interpret manifold learning algorithms as a color machine okay and we have the same idea so uh, i interpreted uh, isomap as a color machine and then if it is a color machine i thought if it is a color machine we can drive the kernel from isomap and the kernel should be positive semi-definite okay if the kernel is not the positive semi-definite this is not a kernel machine in theory so i checked and unfortunately the isomaps kernel is not positive semi-definite so i modified the kernel to be positive semi-definite and then project and then and then uh, i proposed a kernel isomap and the kernel isomap works as if a you know, kernel isomap is like a a kernel PCA so we can project new data samples to the same uh, space same uh, low dimensional space so uh, based on uh, kernel isomap we train uh, and we uh, project uh, training samples and then when we have a test sample then we can uh, project this sample in the same uh, low dimension space as long as we can uh, we can interpret uh, we can rewrite this isomap as a kernel uh, machine then uh, we can do the same thing as what we did in the kernel pca and the kernel ft okay and the next uh, manifold learning algorithm is locally linear embedding lle okay and in LLE, the idea is quite simple, but the equations are a little complicated. Okay, so let me explain the main idea of this algorithm. So basically, uh, LLE keeps the neighbors. So if the data samples are neighbors in the high dimensional space, then they should be neighbors in the low dimensional space. That's a pretty simple idea, right? So, uh, you know. In the high dimensional space, if these two points are neighbors, then, then in low dimensional space, they should be neighbor. So to implement uh, this idea, then 
there are a couple of steps. First, find the neighbors. Okay, that is the first thing to do. So in the high demand space, find the neighbors for all the data sample. So this one has neighbors, and this one has neighbors, and this one has neighbors. So find all the neighbors for all the points. And then find the linear weight. So xi can be defined by uh, its neighbors. How come is possible? So we assume that you know that when we apply the manifold learning algorithms all the times so locally, it should be Euclidean. If it is Euclidean locally, it means it is flat. In this flat, you know when we have uh, neighbors like this, and we can define this one. And let's assume that you know these neighbors are really close. So when we look at these points, they are on the flat space. Okay, they are on the flat space, which means we can apply uh, we can apply this equation, which means this point can be defined by these samples. Okay. So this one is defined by this ones and this one is defined by this one's neighbors. Okay. And then now uh, we can uh we can update, we can we can learn this parameter WIK. Okay. Again, in the high dimensional space, uh we uh we learn this WIJ. Okay, so let, let's assume that this W is already uh, learned. Okay, so we know this Wij. And now, uh, Xi is in the high dimensional space point. Then now uh, we have Yi, which is a corresponding point in the low dimensional space. And in the, in the low dimensional space, Yi can be defined by the neighbors with the same weight. Okay, and then in this step, we know x sub i and x sub j, and we know who is neighbors, and we have to update this one. But in this step, we know who is neighbors, so we have this matrix, but we don't know uh, y i, we don't know y j. So we have to, we have to learn y i and y j. Okay, so in, 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 for the second step, we uh we minimize this reconstruction error to find the linear weight. So we define an objective function like this. Xi can be defined by its neighbors, and then we want to minimize this error for all the data samples. And Wij is sum to one that is constraint. Okay, so now we learned the W sub i j. Then for the third step, uh, we want to minimize this one. It looks the same, right? But in this case, W is the parameter. In this case, Y is the parameter. Okay, so let it do, uh, W is fixed at this moment, and we update Y i and Y j. And again, uh, we assume that these data points are centered. And then, um, their uh, size, their scale is is kind of constrained. Okay, so think about this one. Uh, from this uh, high demand space to low demand space, if we increase the scale, okay, then. We can have lots of ambiguity here, so we just con we put one constraint to avoid this ambiguity. So centered and the same scale. And these equations are a little complicated, and uh, we can skip this part. And uh, if you are interested in um. Uh, and manifold learning algorithms, then you can follow these uh, equations line by line. Okay. 
and in this slide we find why uh, in the previous slide we update wi and in this slide we learn yi okay so you can follow the lines by yourself okay so then when we apply a uh, lle to a couple of examples then we can get a beautiful figures again and when we apply a uh, LLE to Word document counts, then we can see this Italy and Italian and Middle Ages, Medieval and Paris, London. And here painting, gallery, artist, artist, painter, etc. So uh, we can see some meaningful uh, relationship between the words. And also uh, if you apply the LLE to image data set, then this axis shows the expression of this person, right? This axis shows uh, left and right. And Isomap and LLE are the most popular uh, representative machine, uh, manifold learning algorithms, but they are different. So Isomap takes a global strategy and uh, LLE takes local strategy. So Isomap calculates the geodesic distance between all the pairs. Okay. And then it tries to, uh, it, it applies M MDS to the geodesic distance. So when we apply MDS to geodesic distance, then uh, you know the all the pairs are all the pairs are important and and MDS take care of all the distances. Okay, even when two points are far from each other in the geodesic distance, but still that is important. So that's why uh, Isomap takes a global strategy. But LLE LLE uh considers only the the neighbors okay so neighbors are covered by LLE and LLE analyzes local linear coefficients and reconstruction errors and no need to solve large dynamic programming problems which means uh, in isomap we uh, we have to uh, calculate a shortest path okay and w is very sparse and whose structure can be exploited for savings in time and space. And there are a couple of you know, more efficient algorithms. And it is closely related to spectral clustering. So we already talked about the spectral clustering and the algorithms are similar. They look similar, okay? And that's it.